this is Devin Stetson with my final project for SIE558, a temperature sensor. Originally, I wanted to record sound levels in UMaine's Vogler library and connect that to education to see whether background noise was exceeding optimal learning conditions. Unfortunately, I had an issue with my sound sensor and I couldn't quite get it to work. Now, those readings there were the same regardless if the room was extremely quiet or if I was holding the speaker right up to the computer speakers with music blasting. If I held it at an angle, I could get it to work, but in the end I decided to move to a different project. Which brings us to this project, the temperature sensor. Um, I live in Stodder Hall in the UMaine campus and it tends to feel much colder than the thermostat is set to. So I decided to test it to see what's actually going on. So for my plan, I decided to take sensor data from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, for five days. Each day, I set the thermostat to a different temperature. And at night, I put it back to 55 degrees Fahrenheit to cool the room off. The sensor remained in the spot each day. For software, I used Arduino to gather the temperature. Python did all of my operations on those temperature readings from the Arduino. And then I stored it in MySQL, that way I could work on it later to get additional information. So the Arduino code, you can see here, I used two libraries, Dallas Temperature and the One Wire. It made the code very simple. It did all of the calculations to figure out what the temperature should be. Um, I'll show you what that looks like and what it looks like when it's running. So here we are in my Arduino code. I can go to Tools, go to the Serial Monitor, and we'll see over here we have temperature readings coming in. They're in Fahrenheit. I could choose Celsius if I, Celsius if I wanted to. I'll cover the temperature sensor so you can see just how quickly it begins to heat up. So it's pretty quick on the ball when the temperature changes. So uh, for the sensor stream programs, I use Python. I created a tumbling window with the width and slide of 77. What that does is I end up getting a window that's just a fraction of a second over a minute, which makes it very easy to see the minute to minute changes. I also started setting up the mean, minimum, and maximum calculations. And then over here in the loop, we can see it processing those um, mean, minimum, and max. And then I'm printing out SQL queries and what the actual data is, just so I can see it. And we'll give that a look to see what it looks like. So here we are in the Python program. You can see all of that is there, along with some other information that was needed in case I wasn't using an Arduino as an input source. We can hit play right here, start. And once it starts, it'll take about a minute for any data to start coming in. So we'll pause the recording here and come back in five minutes to see what the output looks like. So it's been five minutes and we can see as it goes through each window, it gives us the mean temperature, the minimum temperature, the max temperature, and then our insert statement, uh, just so we can see what's going on. So we'll stop that for now, and we will head back over. So we just saw the results in the SQL uh, insert statements in the Python window. So here's what I ended up getting for results. Now remember, each minute is 77 tuples. So in that five minute that we just saw, we had um, quite a few, quite a few tuples in there. It ends up being 385. So as it doesn't vary from minute to minute too much, we're just keeping the mean temperature for each minute and then graphing it. So on these graphs, you can see that the orange line on the screen ends up being what I set the thermostat at. The blue line is all the data that I collected for the day from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So you can see when it was set to 60, it actually ended up being quite warm, but then slowly decreased throughout the day. When we go to the next day, where it was set to 65, you can see it started out rather well for a few hours, but then again, it declined all the way there. Continuing to it being set at 70, it was way below what it should have been. It was only around 70 or higher 
for not even an hour during the day. And it actually got down to around 57 at points. 75, um, again, the first few hours it works, but then it slowly starts to decline. Now, 80 is what I expected to see for all of them. You have the temperature raising until it gets higher than 80. The thermostat notices that, stops cooling the room, so it goes down and then up and down and it repeats that. But you see, it's about 10 degrees less than what it should be. Now, maybe that's just the thermometer temperature sensor that I have isn't quite calibrated right, but 80 is quite a large number, so I expected it to be sweltering, and this was the most comfortable day, especially compared to the 70 degree day where, when I was working in my room, it was 57 points. And the next one, it's a bit of a mess, but it's everything together. Um, it goes from the cooler temperature colors all the way to the hot, just to show you that most of the days ended up in between 60 and 65 at the end of the day, regardless of what the temperature was. So since we stored the data, we can do more transformations on it, pick certain things out just to see what it's looking like. Uh, we can get all the data for a day. We can see where the temperature is close to the thermostat's temperature, get a count, look at the percentage, or we can just look at the mean overall. So for overall averages, you can see room temperature, thermostat, and then the outside weather, which I took from weather.com. Uh, since it's so cold, I'm not sure if it matters as much as the room should be at at least 55. But you can see once we get to the fifth, it looks like it's about 10 degrees off. Other facts we can look at, we've got the minimum temperature, maximum temperature for each day. So the highest point it got to, the lowest point. And then we have the count where it's close, which I put at plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the fourth was the closest, even though the seventh, the day where it was 80 and it looked like a normal uh, heating and cooling, was actually off. So if I were to do this again, what would I improve or add? I'd add more sensors throughout the room to see how the various areas differ. So maybe in the center of the room, in a corner, by the window, by a thermostat. Uh, we could test various rooms across the building. So it's a four floor building, three floors and a ground floor see how each floor differs. I should obviously call maintenance to come tweak my thermostat and heater to see if there is anything up with them. And I could, with multiple temperature sensors, see if the sensors themselves have any sort of uh, differences. So maybe the temperature sensor was off a little bit, which made my results seem worse than they actually were. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. But before we leave, uh, we did record those five tuples when we looked at the example for the Python program. So let's just pull those up just so you can see that it is popping up in the MySQL workbench, which I use to look at and organize my data. You can see over throughout the whole thing with testing and the 9 to 11 days, I had 4,222 tuples. And from this screen, it's really easy to organize by time, max temperature, min temperature, or any as fancy as I want to get. So great, and that's it.